Anthony's a very uh, a very modest man, and um, uh, if you um, if you met him amongst a group of people, you would never begin to realise how remarkable he is. And I was lucky enough to be able to hear him give um, an earlier version of, of um, the uh, Olympics presentation um, in London some time ago. And uh, I, f I felt that that was the most interesting thing that I'd heard said about the Olympics. Uh, this is the most incredible story. Anthony Thorley. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, thanks. Now, first of all, I'm going to offer the god Morpheus. The god Morpheus is the, the god of sleep. And you all have the blessing of the god Morpheus. If you find that after 20 minutes of my rambling, you need to nod off. I'm going to count the heads as they fall. And you have my blessing with the goddess or god Morpheus. Um, and the second thing is, um, for those of you who have to leave early, you must go by my table and buy one of these which is um, my megalithomania talk on landscape zodiacs of Britain, which you will see a little bit of in this talk. Um, but if you, it's going beyond you so fast, you know. Um, this is the DVD to get, and it's at knockdown price today, and Hugh Newman's just had it beautifully re-edited with some um, nice interviews. So um, a story about landscape, a story about genius loci, a story that I found shocking and surprising for me, an overwhelming story, where I suddenly realized that our land, this land of Britain, was alive, and it was telling us things. It was bringing us information, and it was insisting on a certain kind of happening. And this all started for me some time ago. But let me kind of begin in the sense at the beginning of this two-part presentation, two sort of aspects of landscape speaking. The second part, the main part, will be about the great god Lu, um, who you've already seen the name Lugos earlier on in Robin's um, presentation. And I'm going to take that a lot further. But first of all, I just want to take you on a bit of a magical mystery trip into landscape zodiacs, which particularly interests me. Now, this is Catherine Emma Maltwood, born in 1878. And just shows, doesn't it, how, you, how, how she's anticipating her future. She was an incredible sculptress, but died in 1961, and she's the person who rediscovered the Glastonbury Zodiac in around about 1917. Here she is in uh, 1905, newly married in a beautiful pre-Raphaelite um, dress, and she doesn't look like the kind of incredibly tough, um, somewhat feminist uh, artist, sculptress, incredibly talented lady, mystic, interested in uh, religions from all over the world, traveled all over the world, built up a huge art collection, went to Canada in 1938, took everything to the University of Victoria. You've got to go now, now to Canada to study the Glastonbury Zodiac, which I've done. She also was not only a very fine sculptress, she chose her man very carefully. She chose John Maltwood, who invented the Oxo Cube. And that made them millionaires. And next year, 1911, 2011, is the 100th anniversary of the Oxo Cube. And you'll be all having fantastic publicity about this, three for the price of one in Asda and all this kind of stuff. And when you buy your Oxo Cubes, just remember that without the money and the profit from Oxo Cubes, we would have nothing about landscape zodiacs. Because this lady was able to hire planes before you could do that kind of thing in the 1920s and 30s and take aerial photographs over the Somerset su countryside and find out about landscape zodiacs in an extraordinary way. This is a landscape zodiac, and this is the one that she first published in 1935. This is the Somerset countryside, and this is where Glastonbury is, around about here. Down here is Somerton on the Leo figure. This is the ecliptic of the sun. And she found in the field patterns and in the stream patterns and in the topography of the Somerset countryside these incredible zodiacal figures, Scorpio, Virgo, Leo, and so on, all the way around, and a mystical kind of cross uh, star in the middle. And this was the first public expression of a landscape zodiac nearly 20 years after she actually discovered it. Now, all these figures carry extraordinary synchronies, synchronies events, both for people who live on them, like 
if you go and live on the Leo figure, you'll find yourself perhaps wanting to become a lion tamer. Or if you li live on the Taurus figure here, um, you'll find you'll want to get into cattle farming, which quite a lot of other people are into already in Somerset, but nonetheless, more cattle farming than usual, and so on. It goes all the way around like this. If you live on the bird here, the Libra figure, you're very likely to call your house after a bird. There are 181 houses in the village of Barton St. David, but actually 12% of them are named after birds, a higher proportion than in other nearby Somerset villages. So there's a very funny process going on in landscape zodiacs. They carry the energies of their signs and they, they kind of uh, somehow they communicate these to the people who are living there. I could tell you lots more. That's the, the other DVD you need to buy. There's lots of incredibly wacky but absolutely true information about landscape zodiacs and how they go. So this is the landscape zodiac. A lady called Mary Kane, who some of you know about, came along from 1961 onwards, and she refined the Glastonbury zodiac. She also emphasized the fact there was a guardian dog, approximately where Canis Major is in the sky, because remember this zodiac represents the planisphere of the sky above dropping down to the ground, a true stars and stones interaction. Quite magical, quite fascinating. I'm not going to linger on zodiacs because they're on my other DVD, but I just want to tell you quickly where we go from here. The point is that in the UK, there are lots of zodiacs. They're all over the place. And they've nearly all been found in the last 50 years. Now, just to show how old I am, um, here, see number two, the Cheviot zodiac, Anthony Thorley, this is 1987, and this is the zodiac that I first found when I lived in Northumberland. And I found one more in Wiltshire since. What on earth does that mean when you say finding a zodiac? I mean, who put them there and what are they about? Well, it's very, very, very fascinating um, how they are there and what they're about. But I then came across some material some years ago about a thing called the Gypsy Switch. Now, who's heard of the Gypsy Switch? Hooray! Some people have heard of this gypsy switch. Jill Smith, a traveler, artist, poetess, and um, street theater performer with her young family, meets a gypsy in a calf in Glastonbury High Street. Where else? And um, this old guy says to her, this is a traditional route, the gypsy switch around England, which gypsies took up to the 1920s, and it's fallen out. Nobody really knows about it now. Every single month of the year, they stop the caravans at a particular point on a zodiac around the country. Capricorn down here at Stonehenge, Cancer here up in uh, the Durham area, uh, and round across to Ireland um, for tourists. So every month, the caravans would move round on this traditional route. And when I first heard Jill Smith described this as an Earth Mysteries moot in the 1980s, got really very excited. In the middle, the gypsies reckoned...